wanted to make a video showing my enclosure that I made for my printers and my spools up here. Uh, I guess while I'm at it, I'll also show my overall makerspace slash living room, which as you can see is literally half of my living room. Uh, I live in a one bedroom apartment and I don't have much room, so I have to make do and this is what I got. Uh, I ended up building everything <laughs> right there uh, in front of the television, uh, cutting every board and just painting everything and screwing everything together right in front of the TV. Uh, I built everything inside the house, so I have this huge thing now. I live on the third floor and it was built in here, so I'm not really sure how I'm going to get it out, but I like it for now and I'll worry about that later. Uh, originally I built these three tables uh, to have more surface space to do things on. Uh, I wasn't using up all the surface space, so I decided that I would dedicate this table to becoming an enclosure for my printers. Uh, the reason why I wanted to do that, a few things. Uh, I wanted to be able to control the humidity and temperature, the, the overall climate inside of where my printers are and where my filament is. Uh, mostly because one, PLA uh, with high percents of humidity, it degrades or just doesn't agree with, with high humidity, which wasn't really a problem where I live, uh, but it's nice to be able to control it. The main reason why I did it was because of ABS, which when it prints, uh, prints micro particles of cancer, and I didn't want to get that cancer uh, or catch it or breathe it. So I wanted to have a seal with negative pressure blowing all those microparticles out of my house and not into my living room. Uh, so what I did was I built everything up two by threes, uh, panel board across. I scored all of this acrylic that's all around. I epoxied it to the boards and then from the insides, you can see I used rubber sealant all around here to seal the best I can, try to create as much of a perfect seal as I could. Uh, I used rubber uh, weather sealing liner that you would use uh, on your doors to keep rain and weather and all that other stuff out. Uh, I got a fan here from Radio Shack that was going out of business or closing or whatever. Uh, got it really cheap, so I ended up, it's a four inch fan, uh, ended up mounting it to the back of the wall, going out that way to a duct and then a vent, which goes out the window. I put a little bit of insulation in the duct to keep cold weather and whatnot out. And then the vent, you can see, uh, or you can't see the vent, you can only see the duct. I'll show you the vent later. Uh, so as you can see, it's 84 degrees and 25% humidity in here. Uh, this 70% and 34% or 70 degrees Fahrenheit and 34% humidity is on another sensor, which is the ambient temperature and humidity of my living room. So as you can see, I do have control over the humidity and the temperature in here. Up here, it's 80% or 80, 80 degrees Fahrenheit and 26% humidity where the filament rests. Uh, this acrylic comes up, it's on hinges all around here. You can see weather line uh, and magnets, pretty strong magnets uh, that I mounted to the back of the acrylic and right here. So when it touches, it forms a seal. Uh, I designed this bracket, I guess holder or whatever, uh, to hold this, which I designed, which is all one print. Uh, comes out like this, has uh, stoppers and sliders to slide out. You can see right here I have this. This holds up the acrylic. So original designs. Uh, all the filament spools have their own holders, which I designed. Uh, this holder is already on Thingiverse. It's actually pretty popular on Thingiverse. But every, every spool up there has its own spool holder color printed with it because I'm OCD like that. Uh, 
this comes off, these come off too, it all screws on. You can extend this, make this fatter, skinnier, whatever you need to fit any size spool. I have yet to come across uh, a company or spool that I can't fit onto this spool holder with a little modification. Uh, I have a lot of different filaments up here, uh, PLA, ABS, uh, hips, PVA, so going in the dark, uh, the 3D X-Tech carbon fiber, uh, some Ninja Flex, PET. Uh, let's come back here. These actually led me to design something else, which I'm currently working on is printing right here. It's a baton. I'll show that right quick. Uh, I have the fill all the all this filament guides through. It comes through the top right here into filament guides and cleaners, and they hold up into a I guess a stopper or a holder. If you look underneath, you can see that I put weather shields underneath each each guide that the filament's coming through. It basically hugs the filament, gets the dust off. On the fan, had it go into the switch so I could turn it off. Uh, I put this cover on so I don't do what I just did right there and stick my fingers in there and cut myself, uh, which I did like six times. LEDs, I cut. There's three strips that are all linked together. Uh, I linked them together with the Cat5 cable, which I found is actually works perfect for uh, linking LED lights, strips of LED lights together, other than using the four cord LED specific ones that are very expensive. You can just use Cat5 cable just the same. I'm going into a controller with an RFID to control this. Uh, remote control. Uh, if we turn off the lights, you can see the coolest feature that when I do the RGB on the LED, all the filaments seem to jump around. This is pretty cool. They, uh, they change colors and they react to the LED. So purple turns brown. Green turns blue, blue turns green, red turns black, yellow, yellow just jumps out. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool feature. I really didn't think it was gonna happen like this, but pretty happy I went with the RGB instead of the straight white. Uh, but that's cool. Let that go through. Let's see that one more time. All right, so turn these lights back on. Like I said, with the with the fan, I don't know if I explained this, but the fan's going out, negative pressure. So I do have some sort of a vacuum in here. What I wanted to accomplish, if you look, when I close these two sliding glass doors, and I touch this, I let go. As you can see, it bows in. So I did indeed form some kind of a vacuum in here. I have the heater and a couple dehumidifiers to control. Uh, I designed a custom tool shelf for the tools that I want to keep in here that I work on the printers and scrape things off. Another shelf over here. Uh, if you look with the baton, this is a baton that I designed based off of this concept. Made it stronger. Uh, as you can see, it's on. It's good infill. Pretty strong. I have another one printing here. Uh, the prints in one print, as you can see right here. And right there, and then this, which is threaded. And then another free running screw which goes in the back, spins, layers these out, and then this spins to lock this middle piece in so this doesn't come out. Uh, this one's broken due to me prototyping, uh, but this one's still good. Uh, and this one's printing. Uh, I went with T. This is the first weapon. I've never designed a weapon with my 3D printer before, but got carried away after designing the baton. I designed these uh, plastic knuckles. Uh, Got a little carried away. They 
look devastating. Uh, switch, seal, guides. I pretty much explained everything in here. Uh, this is where I keep all my tools. This is a, a bandsaw that's, this is also my kitchen table. And yes, there's a bandsaw right next to my kitchen table. And I use the bandsaw more than the kitchen table. So it's fine. Uh, over here I have all my electrical prototyping stuff. Arduino, Uno, Mega, an Intel Galileo, breadboard, solder. Uh, what have you. This lamp, I designed the base to this lamp, printed that out, uh, probably put that on Thingiverse. Here I have basically jumper wires, uh, resistors, batteries, LEDs, everything that goes with development boards and more shields and boards. Over here I have a, a, ton, of, a ton of shields and boards I just play with. Uh, There's all my thick cores over here, my cubes. I designed, reverse engineered a Rubik's Cube and designed this cube, which I printed. Probably put that and everything else on Thingiverse. Uh, made this a Linux machine to the computer or to the TV. This is a shelf that's right here. Uh, this is my custom tool thing printed this out Stop. that's over there this is the vent that you couldn't see on the other side as you see the air goes through and comes out the bottom so rain and weather and whatever doesn't get in uh, bar holders up there this is the extenders this is the baton this is the spool holder and this is a bag carrier shopping buddy thing that I have printing right here. Uh, but here's the final prototype. These are already on Thingiverse, uh, but they hold bags, pretty ergonomical in your hands, nice fillets and chamfers. Uh, holds up a lot of weight, really come useful when you're carrying a lot of bags or anything heavy. Uh, Everything that I just showed you, all the designs and whatnot, I'm going to put up on Thingiverse and kind of like an outline of how to build this enclosure. Uh, over here, I have some of my more decor. I have a server that <laughs> my girlfriend and I built. It was mainly her idea. She wanted to build a server with nothing to serve for no reason, and we did build it and it has all new components and it's brand new, expensive, and it doesn't serve anything, but it works. Uh, what else? Showed the lights, showed enclosure, anything else that I missed? My living room, my fine art. Uh, I'm, I'm a collector of fine art and frames. Uh, yeah. And then that's about it. Thanks for watching my video.